Hello everyone. Welcome to my small humble studio here in Florida. I wanted to just open with this shot so at least give some depth to the room. I'm going to use another camera as I talk about the work uh, so I can at least get some movement and move around the room because there's <clears throat> not much stepping room when the pieces are on display as such. But I managed to get uh, a good bit of work in here, so let's look at them. So this is February 3rd, 2017. So for the first question on the work, what is your overall work process on creating your art pieces? Occasionally the pieces are sketched out, numbered, and assigned the shapes and diagrams for what they will be. This often happens in series works I do, which are usually 8 to 12 in number. The sketches done keep me from making something too similar than the other pieces in the series, and titling them accordingly by comparing them side by side on paper. At other times, the paintings that might start as an 8-piece series end up as a 4-piece series, or often in pairs. <clears throat> this occurs when the shapes and layout of the lines used cannot provide a significant use of space, of something different than the four pieces done prior. This also occurs when two paintings just appear in a totally different spontaneous direction and I keep them that way, pushing them out of the current series and into their own. This kills time on the current series and thus when keeping schedule I try not to head that direction but when it happens I'm still extremely happy about it because it means I have just discovered a new vein of work to build on and replicate. The pieces are put up on the wall prior to and after completion for examination. They are often turned upside down and sideways for checking balance of line and curve and turned back around. They have a top to them and rarely have I created a piece that could be shown upside down. Since I am dealing with lines and curves and often a hard dry brush edge, often those lines and curves are themselves performing an illusion in that they look balanced when the top of the piece is in its correct location. When turned upside down, this balance is lost. The slightest sway one way or the other matters a great deal. And so the top of the paintings matter a great deal. And then we have the touch-up procedure and glossing or matting procedure. Sometimes the paintings are glossed or matted with the final coat, varnish, and sometimes they are not. Often this does depend on timing, and other times it is just preferential due to the fact that I have already used a mat or a gloss within the paint as it was put on the canvas. The classic isolation coat of soft gel gloss can change the whole appearance of the work. On top of that, adding another coat of matte or gloss varnish for final coating changes it one step further. So I'm very careful with when the gloss or matte will be used, and often prefer it be used within the paint itself, using the appropriate gloss or matte to do so. At that time, at least I know the appearance of the painting is the way I want it. It is then just a matter of choosing on whether to use isolation coats thereafter for protection purposes of the pieces, which they do indeed offer a great deal of UV and storage protection from rot, mold, etc. A climate controlled storage unit is well worth the money I have found. Paintings without that isolation coat stay protected. Without climate control, I have found they deteriorate via moisture, change in temperatures, dust, mold, bugs, spider eggs, you name it, on the back of the canvas as well. I have spent a couple of months in the past previously repairing damage from pieces that sat in storage units that were not climate controlled. Once the pieces are completed fully and prior to storage, photography happens. In the past, I have had painting photographers take pictures of my work. I usually have to bring the pieces to their studio via van. This process is costly and time consuming and risky and that every move increases some type of damage to the pieces. Nevertheless, I prefer the photos being done right and it is worth the risk. I am looking forward to the unit in our class on photographing our own work. Once photographed, the pieces either go to storage or back to the studio for hanging. Usually most pieces are sent to the storage location while I keep two pieces of the series for local showing by whomever is wishing to see samples of the series already completed, either after they have seen the photographs or before. This cycle repeats itself. The more photographs I get done, the more it lets me know what I have actually completed. It is a rewarding feeling knowing that now I can share these photos with whomever 
and then lead them to the actual work when that interest is there. It also gives me a safe record of what has indeed been accomplished as years go by. And that is the overall process from beginning to end uh, as far as creating the work. Uh, on the question of how does the work manifest the ideas put forth in your artist statement. Some ways might be obvious while other, others may be more subtle or oblique. I always am shooting for mixing the natural with the synthetic. This is usually done with color, space, and the shapes chosen. I never want the technology aspect to be too obvious in my work, meaning I don't want a matrix background behind a tree, nor do I want a matrix background anywhere. I want a new and unique series of shapes and colors that interact with each other, that originate from natural shapes, but are synthetic in appearance. I have just as much interest, if not more so, in making sure the paintings are new and unique to the audience, while they keep this vein of nature versus technology going. One of my first works in the late 90s was called just that, Nature versus Technology. Whether some works are more emphasized with this interaction is not as important to me as that they be balanced and interesting to view. It is still about the paint, the canvas, and what this piece will do for a person when looked upon. <clears throat> and to the question of how would you describe elements such as personal symbolism as represented by color choices, subjects depicted, etc. I believe that the colors I use at the time of each series definitely reflect the overall mood I'm in. That is why I never want my series of works too long since things will change and your color choices will change. As an example, painting 10 works in black has still made me a bit tired of black currently. I'm now back to whites and brighter colors in the recent works. And for the question of how does the work fit into the big picture of your work thus far, how does it relate to what you have done before, and what new directions can you see for carrying the idea into the future? The work now is tied directly to my first series of works I completed from 1999 to 2002 in that I am using the same shapes in areas of the new work while using shapes from my recent series as well. I see me repeating this process, this intertwined process, in the future. It allows me familiarity with the shapes and methods used to achieve the overall process and also allows me to enter new objects and shapes and colors into the work moving forward. Thank you very much for observing the work. I hope it was enjoyable. And I'm glad to have my first virtual studio up and running.